is don't quit, pivot. And I wanted to bring this up because I think it's really common for people, whether they're doing keto or whether they're doing any type of an eating plan to kind of think while they're doing it, they're, you know, they're hundred percent, they got their plan, they're doing it hundred percent. But then when they decide that they're not going to do it a hundred percent, and we'll talk about the reasons why in a second, then instead of still doing some of it, they just go completely off. We call that the all or nothing thing, right? And that happens a lot. And I wanted to talk about that. Um, but first, welcome everyone, just in case there's anyone here who doesn't know me. My name is Lita and I am not a doctor, but I'm super passionate about keto, low carb, anything natural health. But what I talk about here is just my opinion. So please do not take it as medical advice. I also want to mention that I am the owner of Intentionally Bear and we make clean, healthy keto products that have the most active ingredients. And I'm going to talk about one real quick right now because we have a really good deal on it. And it's our collagen peptides with biotin. And this is not just any collagen peptides that you'll see on the market. There's lots of collagen peptides on the market, but ours is an anti-aging product. Really, I'm I'm all about looking good at whatever age we are and anything I can get in as an extra bonus, I'm going to do it. So we have in here lots of biotin. OK, we've got hyaluronic acid, vitamin C and zinc, all super good for you. But they work synergistically together to get the collagen peptides and the biotin in our cells where we need it. This little baby, I never go a day without it. I always have it every single day. It's absolutely amazing. And right now for the whole month of February, buy two, save 15%. Okay, so if you're in the States, you can buy it on amazon.com or our website. If you're in Canada, I'm really sorry. We're still going through the Health Canada process, which is a very long one. So you will have to order it from our website and we will ship it to you. And that's at intentionallybear.com. So Canadians, that's how I got to do it too. So that's how you get it. Anyways, buy two, say 15% for the whole month of February. Okay. With that said, let's talk about our topic today. First, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Okay. How do you eat when you're not 100% keto? or not 100% on whatever way of eating that you're embarking on in that time. So like, not when we're doing a challenge, not when we're, you know, right on our game with our accountability partner or going to the gym or whatever it is, when you're not 100%, how do you eat? I would, I want to know, and I'm going to go back and, and hear what you have to say after. So why wouldn't you be on your game? right? Why wouldn't you be 100% on your program? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, lots of reasons. Um, an unexpected event has happened in your life. You go on vacation, you have an emotional burnout. A lot of us have had that in the last two years. Keto, low carb, it's not our religion. It's a tool, right? It's a tool like anything else. You'll find that people in the group here, <coughs> excuse me, there'll be like, the traditional keto, you know, they're following all the macros exactly, but there's some people that go, you know, really high on protein and they go, you know, lower on other things and they just do what works for them. And that is how you should do it. There is no one way, but it is a tool, just like low carb is a tool. Paleo is a tool. Going to the gym is a tool. Uh, drinking lots of water is a tool. There are a lot of things that are a tool. It is not set in stone how you do it, but I'm very curious what you guys do when you're not following anything, like when you're not planning it out and tracking your macros and, and doing the thing that you would do if you were actively trying to lose weight or work on a health condition or something, how are you eating? Who do we have here? Annette. Hello, Annette. Good to see you. Um, Rochelle says probably dirty keto. Okay. Fantastic. Jen says all or nothing. Um, me too. 
Yep, I do that often as well. Um, that is, I would say that that is the majority of the people would say all or nothing. That is probably the most. Diane says, when I go off, I go to sugar. Very common. Absolutely very common. It's like, I'll say from the mental perspective, I think it's sort of like when you're on your game and you're following your plan, whatever that is, and you're really inspired and you're really motivated and stuff and you feel so good about yourself. Then when you decide that you're not going to do it 100% for whatever that reason is, there's this mental thing that happens in our minds and it's so easy to do. Even if you don't think you're a perfectionist, people do this all the time. They're like, well, I'm not going to do it perfectly, so I'm going to totally go off. Or another thought is, um, oh, this is my chance, right? I've been, I've been really good for a lot of months and I've been towing the line. This is my chance. I'm going off. Let's really go off. Let's really go off and do it. And, and I get that. I mean, especially for like vacations and, and short little blips or whatever. I totally get that. Um, there's something kind of exciting and kind of naughty about just <laughs> going off and, and just eating whatever you want, even though I think most of us would totally admit that after we've done it for a little bit, it's not quite as good as we kind of thought in our head it was going to be. But in that moment, it feels so delicious, doesn't it? Like, oh, I'm just going to go off and just eat whatever. Uh, Rochelle says, but I also have a health condition that I can't eat more than 14 carbs a day. Oh, well, then you really do have to toe the line, which, you know, that's a, that's a that's a good and a bad thing, I guess. In a way, it is a good thing because it, it makes you, you know, stick to your plan. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the all or nothing thing. So when we're, you know, on our game plan and everything and we're just really trying so hard, we just do everything, you know, the way that we should. And that's why we talk about in the group, we talk about, you know, if we're going to go off, just have a one and done so it doesn't last too long. And don't be hard on yourself and all that kind of stuff. But I'm kind of talking a little bit more like longer term going off. So I would say for that would be like, like I said, an unexpected event, a vacation, emotional burnout where you feel like I just literally can't follow something right now. And just the thought of it um, just is just overwhelming for me. So I, I just, I can't even do that right now. In those kind of situations where this is going to be a longer term going off, not like a one and done, not like a weekend, not like a one meal or whatever. And what I wanted to talk about was the, the healthy things that we have sort of come to love, come to enjoy with this lifestyle. And there's a lot of them. And maybe you guys already have this as part of your life. And so it's not really a big deal, but I just kind of wanted to point some of these things out in case it helps anybody out there. So I'm going to kind of go through the list here. I'm going to read it over here so I don't miss anything. Okay. So for example, skipping a breakfast for a fatty coffee, which is awesome. Swapping out cauliflower flour rice for regular rice. Uh, change from eating, say, you know, five or six meals a day to eating two meals a day, say. Uh, finding super yummy, carby desserts that you actually like better than the regular desserts. Realizing that you blow it up when you have grains or dairy, and now they're no longer part of your regular diet. Um, feeling great when you add more greens into your day or, you know, for adding um, chia seed water or anything like that that we've kind of introduced as kind of a habit into our day. Uh, noticing improvement with our cognitive function by adding MCT oil into our day. These are things that a lot of us have incorporated when we started keto and we were doing it for weight loss and we had our plan and all that kind of stuff. But over time, they really do become part of your life. And I can honestly say for myself, when I go off, 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 I'm not saying that I don't have the treats. I don't say that I'm not having the chips or anything like that. Those things absolutely happen. But what I'm not doing anymore is I'm not omitting the healthy things that have now become a part of my life. And that's the thing that I really want you to think about in the times that you go off is it really doesn't have to be an all or nothing because even if we're not following keto perfectly following low carb perfectly okay we decided to go off for a while or whatever these little switches if they're part of our life it's going to make it not nearly as bad and honestly just even doing some of these little things 
makes a huge difference in your health. You you do not have to be perfect in order for you to improve your health with little switches like this. And maybe you guys could comment too, if there are things that no matter how you're eating, you still incorporate in your day. Um, I'd love to hear what you do. I absolutely, no matter what, I don't care how I'm eating. It's a fatty coffee every single morning. There is just no doubt about it. I don't feel as good without my MCT oil. I feel amazing. I love it. And now, of course, it's like, you know, it, it's like nobody mess with my coffee. Like nobody mess with my coffee. Um, I'm just going to have it that way. So things like that. But like, okay, so if I if I go to a restaurant, even if I've decided that I'm not going to really be keto that night, I still have my stevia drops in my purse. I still really enjoy that in my water. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There are just certain things that are just naturally part of my life. And I think when you keep those things in there, if you can take away the mental part of I'm not perfect, I'm not doing my plan perfectly, so why even bother? If you can take that out of your head and you can say to yourself, these little things still make a difference. First of all, health-wise makes a difference. But also, once you decide to transition back in to your regular lifestyle of keto or low carb, it's going to make it so much easier because you haven't forgotten the foundational things, the things that you really like. Another thing I'll say for myself, and this has happened long ago, but I gave up grains a long time ago. Now, I'm not saying I don't ever, ever have grains, but I'm saying that they're not a regular part of my life. When, I, when I'm doing my regular keto, they're zero part of my life. If I'm kind of going off short term or whatever, they're not part of my life. Every once in a while, a few times a year, will I have them? Yes, but they will never, ever, ever be part of my regular lifestyle because I know for me, it is just not a good food group for me. It caused me to be inflamed, caused me bloating. Um, I gain weight faster on that than anything else. And so it's just not a regular part. Now, that said, it doesn't mean that in that moment, I didn't have maybe a little bit of sugar or maybe a little bit of, you know, potato, you know, but it's, but those are not food groups that trigger me so badly with my health and with continuing on to eat that way. So just really paying attention to what those triggers are for you. And you can still have that line in the sand, even if you're not following your ideal keto or low carb plan, just having those things as a regular part of your life really makes a difference. Diane says, I always have my fatty coffee every day. Awesome. It's, you know what? I'm telling you, this is what I have in mind every single day. And everybody does their, there's different, but I have one tablespoon of my pure C8 MCT oil, and I put two <laughs> tablespoons of the MCT powder. And I'll tell you why I do too, because I used to put butter in my fatty coffee and don't get me wrong, butter's amazing. But for me to use two scoops of the powder is less calories than one tablespoon of butter. And I'm getting the benefit of the caprylic acid of the MCTs. So to me, it's lower calories to do it that way. And I'm getting like health benefits or whatever. But anyways, I've done it that way for the longest time. And I will not veer off from that. That's I don't care <laughs> where I am. Even when I travel, I bring it with me because I just can't. I, I can go with just the powder um, if I'm kind of stuck with the with the oil, if I'm flying or something and it's a little tricky or whatever. But I have the capsules too. So sometimes I just squeeze the capsules in. But anyways, nobody tell me I am not switching my fatty coffee and I feel amazing. And there's actually quite a lot of experts out there that will say they're not even keto. They're not even keto experts at all. And they talk about the benefits of MCT oil and how it helps our brain and it helps, you know, stay away from those um, brain disorders that we don't want when we get older. And um, so I will always have it as part of my day. Absolutely. Okay. I want to go back here and see what everybody is saying. Um, let's see here. Annette. Still new, even after a year, I treated myself to sushi for my birthday. It satisfied the flavor, but I'm good for another year. Good for you. That's really good. Um, Sharon, I have not gone off since starting last June. Oh, Sharon, I'm so happy for you. That is fantastic. Sharon has done amazing. She was absolutely brand new to keto uh, last June, and uh, she took my beginner's keto course. And 
man, she has done just awesome. And this was, this was someone I think I can share, Sharon, that knew nothing about keto, absolutely nothing about keto. Um, so she started from grand zero and she has done so amazing. I've seen your picture, Sharon, and I know you're so happy. And Sharon travels, you know, she has goes back and forth or whatever, and she just continues that lifestyle where she's at. And I think that's just awesome. So happy for you, Sharon. Um, Rochelle, uh, keeps me accountable unless I'm on my special time, I can have more carbs and I'm guilty of that. Well, at your special time, you should be having more carbs. Um, if, if anyone ever feels like that at that time, they really, really should. I know I feel like that too. And what ends up happening is if you, if you don't allow yourself a little bit more when your body is telling you in your cycle that you should, it ends up being a binge. For most people so it's better to go higher up in the carbs and nothing wrong with having a little sweet potato or you know having more veggies or whatever like having some actual carbs you know what i mean like the ones that we go oh my gosh potato are you crazy yeah well you know what there are there is a time and a place and like i said my line in the sand is more about is more about the grains and if I want to treat myself or I want to go higher up in the carbs, yeah, I'll have some potato. Absolutely, I will. And I'll totally enjoy it. Um, but then it's not it's not triggering me in the way that grains will. And everybody has their food, right, that they can, that they say, like Diane was talking about sugar. Now, I don't know, Diane, if you can have that one and done with the sugar or is it one of those things where you go, you know what, I have such a hard time if I have it not being triggered to have more and more and more. And that's something that we all really have to think about when we decide to go off. Um, let me see. Rochelle, me too. No more grains on a regular basis. And I'm now allergic to aluminum in foods and deodorant. Oh, well, I can't speak for regular food because like my baking soda or baking, baking powder is aluminum free. But I will tell you, if you are looking for a good deodorant, my absolute fave, 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 fave is native. I don't know if you guys use native, but when I first started keto, um, I had wicked BO, like wicked. And this is like, I'm not a BO person. Like I, I'm not that kind of a person that has ever had a problem. In fact, before I went on keto, I would use that little, you know, that little crystal, you run it under water, hot water, and then you rub it on and rub it on or whatever. That is all I needed. I did that once a day and that was all I needed. I never had BO. And then I started keto and holy crap, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is about doing keto that can bring that out. I have, I have done um, a blog post on that before, but it really can cause BO in a lot of people, especially at the beginning, like it kind of goes away over time. But anyways, at that time I was looking for something and I didn't want anything with aluminum. I didn't want a bunch of crappy ingredients going underneath my armpit near my lymph nodes. So I did a little research and I noticed that there were people in yoga groups, hot yoga groups, keto groups. And I saw different people talking about native. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. And this was years ago before it was ever in stores. Like you couldn't get it in store. You had to only buy it online. Now I think you can get it in almost every store. Anyway, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, my favorite one is lavender rose. My absolute favorite, favorite little trick with it is you, you rub it on. And then you have to actually kind of take your hand and smear it in. Like you got to kind of rub it in. Then I do another little pass with it. And then that's good. Sometimes at the end of the day, I'll reapply it just because I love the smell. The smell is so pretty. It is so nice. It's not because I actually have BO at that point in time, but I just really like the smell. But anyway, um, they have little mini ones too. So when I go to the checkout, it always says, do you want travel? Uh, yes, please. Those little guys are so perfect. I throw one in my gym bag. I put one in my travel bag. I've got one at the lake. I've got one in my desk down here. If just all of a sudden I want to, you know, do it. It is fantastic. And trust me when I tell you, I have tried every brand of natural deodorant, whatever you want to call it, antiperspirant, whatever, this is the best. It is honestly the best. Go by all the experiments that I did. Um, you will absolutely love this brand. And they've got so many different smells, whatever you're into. There's like vanilla, there's cypress, there's lemon balm, whatever. Like I said, I love lavender rose. I don't find it overpowering. When I put it on, I can smell it, but it's not like I smell it all day. I got a weird thing about smells. I don't like to smell things like all the time. I can't, I can't smell it. I don't ever walk by and someone goes, Ooh, what smells like lavender rose? Like nobody can smell it. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Cannot say enough. So anyways, I am not, I don't work for the company. I just love to talk about things that really work because, um, 
I love things that are natural, but if they don't work, thumbs down. I mean, it's just, it's just crappy when you waste your money on stuff, right? No offense to anybody who likes it, but like I tried Tom's and, oh man, there must've been like five brands at the health food store that I tried and they did not work. Like if there's any odor coming now <clears throat> or wetness, no, yeah, no. Sharon, thank you. You have changed my life. Oh, Sharon, that is so sweet. I really, really appreciate that. That really makes me happy. I, that is, it is my um, joy in life is to help other people to be the best that they can be and be healthy. And um, thank you. That really made my day, Sharon. Okay. So anybody else have anything to say about this? Uh, did anybody else want to say how they feel if they are not fully doing their keto or low carb plan. If you're off of it, for whatever reason, how do you eat? Is it an all or nothing situation? Or do you go, oh, no, I, I can still watch it. There's certain things that I still love, and I'm still going to follow that. Or is it an all or nothing thing? And that's <clears throat> really what this discussion is all about. Because I really want you all to think about keto or low carb as the tool that it is. It is not a religion. It's nothing to feel guilty about if you're not on it. It's just, are you using the tool? It's it's honestly, I'll, I'll say it kind of like this. You have a gym membership, okay? And you know, when you have a gym membership and you're not going to the gym, there's that feeling of, oh, I feel guilty, I should go to the gym. When really, we shouldn't feel guilty at all. It's like, are we using this tool to the best you know, that's going to help us? Or are we not using the tool? That's really it. And where you're at in your life and what's going on, obviously using our keto tool, using our gym tool, using our drinking tons of water all day tool, like doing all these perfectly every single day would be ideal. It would be absolutely ideal. And I wish I could say that um, I was 100% perfect all the time just for the sake of health and, you know, closer to my goal weight or whatever. But that doesn't mean that when you're not doing that, you aren't doing good things for yourself. I actually, I'll tell you another little story about myself. So I had this little, I think I told you, I got this little, little cough that I had been dealing with. You know, I did have pretty sure had COVID like two years ago when it first came, there was no vaccinations then or whatever, and got a really bad cough. And since that time, it's like, if I get a tiny little something, like if my body's fighting off a little something, I'll get that cough again. And then it'll go away. And then I'll go for months and then it'll kind of come back. I mean, it's just one of those things that I think I'm going to deal with. And I do find that, you know, if I if I decide to have some dairy, too much dairy in one sitting, you know, that's a mucus producer for anybody. Um, never have dairy if you're sick or have a cough or anything like that because it just kind of makes it worse. But anyways, it's not what caused it, but it just kind of flares it up. Anyway, long story short, I decided to go and try a hyperbaric, hypo, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. I think I'm saying that right. I have heard a lot about it and we have one in our town and I'm always into like natural stuff. I love to try anything. What the heck? Um, it was interesting. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was like you're, you're, I was in a submarine and I've got all these oxygen tubes, you know, on me. And uh, it was like insane. It, the pressure, it's like you're going to the bottom of the sea and then you're getting oxygen at the same time. There's something about the pressure and the oxygen at the same time that is supposed to do these amazing things specifically, really good, amazing things for your brain, but it's really good for your lungs. And there's a host of other things. I don't even know all the different things, but my purpose for going was to see if it would help me with this little cough. Um, I haven't really had much of a cough since I've been, so that's, that's a positive. But here's where the story is going. When I went there, I had, they do things that they have to check to make sure that you're healthy enough to go into this little contraption. So they check your blood pressure. Now, excuse me, normally my whole life, I've been kind of like what they call borderline. And so if I would go into the office or the, the doctor's office, they would always say, well, you know, it was kind of high when you came in, but then you kind of relaxed a little bit and now it's come down. It's still a little, you know, higher than what we would like, but it's not way high like it was. So they call it like white coat syndrome. People get that all the time. You get kind of keyed up going to the doctors and you're probably sitting there with a piece of paper for a, for a robe and you know how it is. So you get kind of eh, or whatever. So 
but I never, it would never be considered ideal, right? But all these years of doing keto, not perfectly, not perfectly, but many things becoming part of my lifestyle, many things, no matter how I'm eating, are still part of my life. Healthy changes that are now just instilled in me as my everyday kind of thing. So here I go in, I haven't had my blood pressure checked for quite some time. And here I am sitting here next to this, what looks like a submarine and oxygen tanks and stuff. So I'm sure there was part of me that was like, oh my goodness. Anyways, the naturopathic doctor comes in to do some different tests. And she says, she checks and she goes, oh, blood pressure, perfect. I'm like, what? My blood pressure is perfect? Yep, my blood pressure is perfect. I can also say that she tested, she checked my ears because they want to make sure that you don't have any kind of, you know, ear infection or something because of all the pressure you're going to be doing. She checked my ears and she said, and this is a quote, your ears have no earwax. Okay. Your ears are the perfect color. They're perfectly clean. She goes, literally, I don't think I've seen ears like this clean, she called it, in a long time. And this really actually means something because when I was young, um, I had bronchitis after bronchitis. I went on antibiotics many, many times. I was very, very sickly. I was allergic to cigarette smoke, still am, and my parents smoked. So that didn't help. I ate grains. I ate dairy. I ate things that, you know, now I know that those are not good food groups for me. But when you're a kid, you know, you eat everything that your parents give you or whatever. And I didn't know. So anyway, I had chronic ear infections, chronic ear infections as a kid. And even as it through in adulthood, I had a problem with earwax, just built up earwax and stuff. And so for her to say that my ears were like as clean as she has ever seen it with no earwax, perfect color, everything, it's like, that's keto. That is 100% keto. And even though I'm not perfect and I don't do it perfect all the time, it was good enough to switch that it was good enough to lower my blood pressure. I was pre-diabetic. Now I'm not. I test my blood sugars quite often because I'm very mindful of that because it runs in the family. Not there either. There are other things too. There are just so many things that I have improved because of this lifestyle, a lifestyle that does not have to be perfect. But back in the day, before keto, and I'll even say the first couple of years of keto, I still had that all or nothing mentality. And every time I would veer off perfection, veer off tracking my macros, veer off eating the perfect keto foods, it was 100% dumpster fire. Like there, there was no in between. It was always all or it was always nothing. And I can honestly say now that I've really embraced more of a balanced lifestyle, and so many of the healthy things I keep in my day, no matter if I'm being perfect keto or not. And it adds up. It adds up. And that's that's really all we, we really want for ourselves, right? Like, I mean, when we're not talking about weight loss, it, when weight loss isn't our main goal, like if we're thinking about our health, because really, like, what is losing weight if we don't have our health, right? So we should always be thinking about our health. It's just, it's so empowering just knowing that this lifestyle can improve so many health things. And I think that's just something we just really got to keep in mind when we're not being perfect. And maybe we are being a little bit hard on ourselves because we're not. Um, maybe we can be disappointed a little bit um, if we're not at our weight or whatever. That's totally understandable. But don't think you're not doing any good because you're doing absolutely amazing. Okay, I don't know if my thing just froze or whatever. I just got a thing on my screen saying that the screen froze. Tell me if you can hear me still. Um, it just says that live video was interrupted. So Sue here got in late. Oh, hi, Sue. I can see you over there, but I can't see you over here. It might be something to do with my iPad. Anyways, hopefully you guys can still hear me. I'm at the tail end of it anyways. Um, Sue, sorry that you're at the very tail end of it. Um, but I will have, oh, good. Okay, good. You can hear me, Michelle. Oh, that's good, Annette. Um, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to put this video in guide number seven, and then you can watch it from the very beginning if you did miss it. Oh, it did freeze. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I get that once in a while here. Anywho, that that's my message for today, guys. So bottom line, keep your healthy, keep the healthy parts that you love. Keep the parts of keto, low carb. I like to say both because, you know, not everyone is strict keto. Some people are like low carb, but keep the parts 
that really, really work for you. The ones that you know intuitively have just become this lifestyle for you. I will say that there's some things that I prefer. I honestly prefer. I just myself, I really don't have a craving for like regular sugary pop anymore. Even just a sip of it just go like, it's just, I guess it's just so sweet to me. I just, it just doesn't really, it's not even anything that I would get excited for. I would honestly rather have my Zevia pop or have my Stevia drops because I prefer it. So it's just things like that, like things that you would rather have. Don't think that because you're not following keto low carb perfectly, that you still, you know, can't have those things. Keep those things as part of your life because it makes a difference. It really does. Okay, you guys, that's that's my message for today. And we can talk about it more in the group for sure. I hope you guys have a lovely evening. And I hope wherever you are, you're getting sunshine like we are. I'm so excited. I feel like, do I get hopeful that we're, we're kind of done with the snow and everything? I sure hope so, because this is really, really nice. Anyways, great talking with you guys. We'll talk to you in the group. Bye. Hey guys, before you go, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we have a new video posted. Also down in the description, I will have links to everything that we talked about in our chat today, including information on how you can join my Intentionally Bear Keto Support Group. See you next time.